In this video, I'm going to take a look at a static equilibrium problem that involves Coulomb's law. Sphere A has a mass of 4.2 times 10 to the negative 2 kilograms and is tethered to a wall by a thin thread. Sphere A has an excess of 1.2 times 10 to the 12 electrons. Sphere B has a deficit of 3.5 times 10 to the 12 electrons and is 0.23 meters from sphere A. Find the tension in the thread and the angle between the thread and the wall. Okay, so we have two spheres, sphere A and sphere B, that are both charged. Sphere A is connected to a wall uh, by a thin thread. Okay? and the thread is at a unknown angle from the wall. We also know that sphere A and sphere B are 0 0.23 meters away from each other. Okay, so the first thing that, that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the charge on each sphere using N times E. So we have the charge for sphere A is equal to the excess amount of electrons that are in sphere A, which is 1.2 times 10 to the 12 electrons, times the charge per electron. Okay, so this is known as the elementary charge. Um, it's the charge on a single electron, and it's negative 1.6. 0, 02 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. This so multiplying the number of excess electrons that we have on sphere A compared to protons. So remember that if the number of electrons and the number of protons is the same, then the charge on an object is neutral, which means it has uh, zero co uh, zero coulombs of charge. But in this case there's an excess of electrons, so the charge is determined by multiplying the number of electrons that we have, uh, the excess electrons, by the charge per electron. And we, so we get negative 1.92 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs because um, electrons have a negative charge. Then moving on to sphere B. So sphere B has uh, a deficit of electrons, which means that it has an excess of protons. So it has more protons than electrons. And so it has 3.5 times 10 to the 12 protons. And the charge per proton is the same as the charge per electron, except that uh, a proton is positively charged. So we take the number of protons and multiply that by the charge per proton and we get 5.61 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs. Okay, so now that we have the charge on sphere A and the charge on sphere B, what we can do now is we can calculate the electrostatic uh, force between sphere A and sphere B. And to do that, we're going to use Coulomb's law. But before we use Coulomb's law, let's first look at a free body diagram for sphere A. So we have, on sphere A, we have uh, gravity acting on it. We also have a, a tension force in the thread. And we have an electrostatic force uh, between A and B. And what we can also do is we can separate the tension force, so we can resolve the tension force into components. So there's a horizontal component, FTX, and there's also a vertical component, FTY. And of course we have uh, an angle uh, separating these two 
um, and it's it's equivalent to this angle right here so now we're going to use Coulomb's law in order to calculate the electrostatic force and so Coulomb's law states that uh, the electrostatic force is equal to uh, K which is known as uh, Coulomb's constant times uh, the charge uh, on sphere A times the charge on sphere B divided by the distance between them squared okay so that's Coulomb's law and so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, substitute in the values so Coulomb's law is equal uh, Coulomb's constant is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9 Newtons times meters squared divided by Coulomb squared and we're also going to substitute in the charges that we found so 1.92 times 10 to the negative 7 and 5.61 times 10 to the negative 7 and in this case we're going to use absolute values uh, so the sign uh, the signs don't matter in this case because we're just looking for uh, the magnitude of the electrostatic force and we're going to divide that by uh, 0 0.23 uh, meters squared and so what we're going to get is 0 0.0183 newtons so the electrostatic force between sphere A and sphere B is 0 0.0183 one eight three newtons so after we have that what we're going to see is that according to the free body diagram we know that the horizontal component of the tension force is going to equal the electrostatic force and the reason for this is because sphere A is stationary it's not moving so since sphere A is, st is static the two horizontal forces acting on sphere A um, have to balance so they have to have the same magnitude and also since the sphere is not moving up and down then the, hor the, the vertical component of the tension force has to equal the force of gravity on sphere A So knowing that, we can now find the force of gravity. So the force of gravity is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So the mass on sphere A is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 2 kilograms. And the acceleration due to gravity is 9.81. So the force of gravity on sphere A is equal to 0 0.41 newtons now because we know that FTX is equal to FE and FTY is equal to FG we can now actually find the tension force in the thread because we have FTY it's equal to FG and we also have FTX because it's equal to um, Fe. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, Pythagoras in order to find the tension force in the thread. And we're going to substitute in the values that we have. Um, so we're going to square uh, the horizontal component of tension and the vertical component of tension. We're going to add them together. Um, and then take the square root of that value to get the tension force in the thread. So that gives us 0 0.41 newtons for the tension force. And the last thing we have to do now is find the angle that the thread makes with the wall. And in order to do that, we're going to use a tangent ratio to find the angle so the ta so tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side 
which in this case is FTX, divided by the, the adjacent side, which is FTY. And since we have both values, we just divide them and we get a certain value. Uh, to find the angle, we have to take the inverse tangent uh, of that value. So inverse, inverse tan of 0 0.0183 divided by 0 0.41 gives us an angle of 2.6 degrees. Okay, so, so the magnitude of the tension force is 0 0.41 newtons and um, it's 2.6 degrees relative to the wall. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and also check out some of my other videos. Thank you for